Hi guys, um, this is Chloe. Um, I'm sitting on my bed on my iPad recording you a week two video about Tim's second week of BMT. Um, I'm really angry because this is probably about the 50th time I've recorded this, but every time I've recorded this, um, the audio gets messed up, my computer gets angry, the internet craps out because um, I'm sorry, but my university's Wi-Fi is crap. So. I'm sorry. I hope this video is okay quality and it works out for you. But let's talk about week two of BMT. A couple things I will talk to you about. Phone calls and letters are two of them. But basically what's going on is a lot. Um, first and foremost, um, physical training is going to be in full swing for these guys. These guys are getting their butts kicked. The first week they were tested to see what their physical abilities were and to see what level they were able to perform at. So now that that initial testing is done, they have moved on and they are just in full swing of physical training. So yeah, <laughs> very, very tiring, takes a lot of effort. So that's going on. Um, also, as I mentioned, they're very, very tired, very sore, and <laughs> they have to sit in a class. And I feel like a lot of people wouldn't put two and two together. I mean, I m it makes sense when you think about it, but boot camp you really just think of getting your butt kicked. But, you know, they're also sitting in class learning in an academics fashion. Um, they, are, they are taking tests and things, and that doesn't sound like a big deal, but I mean, we've all been there in either high school or college, especially in college where you have like that 8 a.m. class that is just like a struggle every Monday, where you cannot stay awake in your class. So, if you can imagine running on, I believe, 9, nine to 10, 10 um, a good 6 or 7 hours of sleep, so they get some good solid sleep, but then you have to run around all day, and then you have to go to class. You have to stay awake in class to do good, and you want them to do good, because if they do good, they'll graduate honors, and if they graduate honors, they'll get an extra free day pass that they don't get otherwise on their graduation weekend. Um, guys who graduate normally, which is awesome, please graduate, um, they will get a free pass for Friday afternoon after graduation and Saturday. Um, guys who graduate honors will get one for Friday afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday. So um, a definite bonus for you if you want to spend more time with your newly graduated airmen is if they do well and graduate honors. Um, so yeah, that's a struggle. Tim told me in one of his letters that he literally had to um, be woken up by the kid sitting next to him because he fell asleep sitting straight up in the middle of class. So not a fun job. Um, also things to think about, um, they're still rotating jobs. Uh, I feel like I mentioned in one of my previous videos that um, the MTIs will assign jobs to the guys in the flight or girls and um, they range from different things like you may have to clean the bathrooms, you may have to do laundry, you may be in charge of watching over everyone in the kitchen and if you do a bad job they'll take you off. If you do a good job they might move you into a different job, one that will require more of you. And so as a result, as a result um, I told you last week Tim has been changed from child runner to um, element leader. An element leader is interesting because um, if you see them marching around on base, there's you, typically four rows of guys, one, two, three, four, and in the dorms, there's going to be four rows of beds. So there's going to be one element leader in charge of each row. Um, they have to make sure they're not misbehaving. If someone does misbehave, the MTI will yell at both the stupid person misbehaving and the element leader for not keeping them in check. Um, also, if... Um, someone has a question or just something they need help with, the element leader is going to be the first person they approach. Then if they can't help, they'll approach the dorm chief and last resort, if the dorm chief can't help, that's when they go talk to the MTI. But um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say going and asking your MTI for help is definitely not a pleasant experience. So I'm guessing they want to avoid that. And so Tim has said as a result he's trying to field a lot of questions. Um, another thing that comes with being in kind of a leadership responsibility role is trying to unify the flight. Um, things work a lot better 
when everybody who's with you works as a team. But these people have all come from different walks of life, different backgrounds. Um, they're in a brand new experience. They're all stressed. They're all tired. They're all sore. They're all probably even a little scared at some times. They are basically running around like chickens with their heads cut off. And so they have to work as a team. So Tim's really trying to get at least his row to work together, and he says it's really tough. He's talked to some of the guys who have been at boot camp longer than him, and they do say that it usually takes um, till about week four or five for that good unification to occur. So he's hoping for that. Um, other than that, ooh, GI Bill. Tim signed his GI Bill and his post-9-11 bill, so he is going to be funded for school, which is awesome. I don't know if you guys keep up with the news, but if not, you should definitely run a little Google search on it, because um, Congress, actually right at the beginning of the March, it went into place. But they've recently cut military tuition spending, which is not super cool, in my opinion. Um, I don't like getting into politics, but please look up into it. I don't know if it'll personally affect um, your loved one at boot camp, but I know Tim's fine. He's still good for schooling under the GI Bill and post 9-11 Bill, so we signed that good news. That's definitely something good to talk about. But um, other than that, I would like to move on to the topic of letters, because since we're stuck at home, that's going to be one of the things we're most excited about. Um, I got my first letter this Monday, which was March 18th and the postmark on it said that it left San Antonio March 14th. Um, there's a good 900 miles of distance between Tim and I right now, and um, just from knowing, like, he called me the day he got my letter, just a coincidence, um, but I put my letter in the mailbox that Monday, and um, he got it Thursday, so it took four days, and so, yeah, it roughly takes three or four days for a letter to travel 900 miles over there to them. So I hope that gives you an idea of post-travel time. I don't know. Um, <laughs> the letters are awesome. You're going to be so excited when you get one. Um, they're just good little pick-me-ups because you finally get to hear I love you. It's written there in their handwriting and you can see it whenever you want. I've been really creepy. I read them all the time. I've actually <laughs> probably read them like every night before I go to bed. It's a good way to go to bed, I think. Um, you'll probably cry a little bit. I was just like, oh, this is awesome. But, you know, be excited about that letter. And when you're writing letters, which you better be doing, write some letters, girl. Or dude, whoever's watching this. Um, be a motivator, you know. If you're sad, tell them you're sad. If there's something going on, you need to tell them. Be honest. But don't be dramatic and just, you know, be like, hey, I love you. You can do this. I believe in you. I'm so proud of you for doing something really hard. And I think this is really cool. And I'm excited. So be strong. You can do this. I know it's stressful, but hang in there. You know, keep your chin up. Tell them to do that because if they work to get the most out of this experience they can, that's just going to help them so much. That's how life works. Um, life's what you make it. And so they got to do their best. So be a motivator. Um, also be a motivator during phone calls. <laughs> and I say this because when you're on the phone with someone and you don't know how long you get to talk to them, if you're lucky, it could be as long as 10 minutes. If not, it can only be three or four. But you will be so amazed at the things that fly out of your mouth at the speed of life. Light. But, um, for example, Tim had just gotten his letters the day uh, he called. He called me on a Thursday. And um, a lot of the times he calls me, he's actually been given his phone back by his MTI to get some information on addresses or something from his mom, and she just doesn't answer. So I feel like I'm lucky to get a phone call once a week. Not everybody gets that, because I know they have to, like, alternate calls between family and other loved ones, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, um, he called me and he told me, oh, hey, I got your letters, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, well, what page are you on? Because, of course, I wrote him a million pages. And he's like, oh, probably only on, like, page two. And mind you, when I answered the phone, he sounded down in the dumps, okay? He was really like, oh, I miss you. I wish I could be there. This week's been really hard. And as I already told you about being element leader, so he was really stressed about that. It's having a hard time with his row. So it wasn't a super awesome week for him. So he was down. And I was like, ooh, I feel bad. 
And so then I knew, like, all of my letters, I was super uplifting in all of them, but there was, like, some not-so-good news in them, because I had to deal with um, a lot of doctors over spring break. Um, I did get my tonsils removed. Um, I had a lot of medical issues I was dealing with. It's, uh, and so I had to talk to him about that, because I have to get surgery this summer. And so on the phone, I was like, okay, I just want to warn you in one of my letters, um, uh, I have to get surgery this summer, but please don't freak out. I promise it's fine. I just want to tell you in person it's fine. And... Um, of course it didn't work. <laughs> it totally backfired, and he got so upset, he was like, oh my gosh, ah! and I felt so guilty. I felt so guilty for the rest of the night after I hung up with him, so don't do that. I mean, it's important to be honest, but take a deep breath before you answer that phone, and think of the words coming out of your mouth, because I was trying to be helpful, but it didn't work. Um, I feel okay, because I know since then, he's gotten some really awesome letters from me. I've sent him pictures and collages and all sorts of fun things that comply with rules. If I were you, I would go Google the to-dos and what-not-to-dos, because <laughs> there's some definite big what-not-to-dos when it comes to letters. Uh, but yeah, so I know he's cheered up by now, because he's gotten cool stuff from me, but don't make yourself feel dumb. You know, be the motivator. Um, other than that, that's all I really have to say about week two. I hope this video finally works, because if not, I will punch someone if I have to record it for like the 50th time. But anyways, um, enjoy your week. Hopefully I can get back to you about week three of BMT. Uh, hopefully he's called, hopefully I've gotten a letter, hopefully I've heard something. But yeah, um, just have a good one, okay? Um, if you have a question, feel free to ask on my blog. See ya!